Hello, my name is Michal Strzewka and I'm representing 7 Let's take a look into the ASP monitoring subsystem, AMS for short. What is monitoring all about? The core part of monitoring is the collection of metrics from both the infrastructure as well as applications on various levels. This process should be performed in the background and should not require constant supervision. There should be a method of automatically taking some steps in reaction to a metric exceeding a predefined threshold. Integration across the ASPint framework should be easy, which is being achieved with the help of the infrastructure manager. In case of a distributed deployment, a layered architecture should be supported. Lastly, edge device operation with limited resources and possibly limited network access should be considered. What innovations is ASPint bringing to the market? Normally, in order to collect various metrics on many levels, one would need to use multiple tools. AMS integrates all these tools in one place. Every single tool would have to be set up, and in order to analyze the collected data, one would have to process it and then manually configure visualization dashboards. AMS brings this automatically. If integration among the selected tools was required, one would need to use the provided APIs of every single tool. Instead, AMS exposes its own API, which integrates and pre-processes all of the information underneath. Support for constraints would need to be developed. AMS provides a declarative language to define alerts. Lastly, the support for a hierarchy of layers would need to be developed. In distributed systems, handling network disconnectivity is extremely tricky. AMS supports such cases by design. The last feature that has not been mentioned yet is the automatic collection of application logs, their centralization and visualization. For the sake of clarity, this presentation will focus on metrics. Let's take a look at AMS architecture, firstly from an edge device's perspective. There can be locally running algorithms as ASPrint applications that report to their local logs and metrics agents. Local InfluxDB stores local metrics and enforces local constraints. On the central cloud cluster, there can also be applications running in analogous configuration. However, higher levels have all the data from lower levels due to the AMS synchronization. Both local, also from lower levels, and global constraints can be enforced on this layer. Let's briefly dive into how AMS synchronizes clusters. On every level, except the highest one, there is a synchronization agent that continuously copies all the local data in synchronous mode to the higher layer, while keeping track of what has already been stored. In case of a connectivity disruption, the copying process resumes from the last synchronized point. When a constraint is being violated, AMS raises an alert notifying space for AIR, which uses AMS RESTful API to obtain a better context of the state of the system. The communication with AMS is being performed over HTTP through the Nginx gateway, which acts as a proxy to the actual API itself. Underneath, the API collects the requested data from InfluxDB. Some pre-processing takes place before returning a response. Lastly, let's briefly take a look at AMS log management. On edge clusters, local applications report data to their local log collection service, which buffers the collected messages and sends them further to be stored. Finally, the messages are being stored in Elasticsearch and can be visualized in Kibana. Now, let's consider the deployment that will be used for the demonstration. There are two layers, both running a separate OSCAR cluster, deployed on EC2 instances. The first layer executes only the blurry faces component, while the second one only the mass detection component. The second layer will have all the data from the first one available locally and enforce global constraints. Violations will be reacted to. Data can be visualized on both layers, but focus will be put on the higher one. This deployment has been automatically created with the infrastructure manager, which underneath executes Helm to install AMS. Then, the monitoring manager sets all the core components up. During the demonstration, configuration will be changed dynamically in runtime, which will be most noticeable in self-updating dashboards in Grafana. Let's jump straight to the demonstration. First, let's take a look at the first layer's infrastructure monitoring. There are many various metrics by default. It is also noticeable that some nodes are currently offline. Now let's switch to the second layer where the same variety of data can be analyzed. To simplify, from now on let's analyze CPU utilization only. After amending the configuration file and applying the changes, the results can be observed instantly. 
Let's go back to the first layer for the last time and take a look at the sprint data. In the system there is currently a non-zero throughput as a background video is constantly being fed into the mask detector application. As explained before, on this layer only the first component is being executed. Now let's check the same dashboard on the second layer. And for the remainder of this demonstration, let's not switch layers anymore. Here the same data can be observed as on the previous layer. Additionally, metrics from the second component and the global constraint can be seen. It is worth noting that while local constraints represent only the mean times of individual executions of single components, the global constraint is not just a simple sum of local execution times. It takes into consideration every session from start to finish, which includes time spent transferring executions, rescheduling, queuing, etc. The implications of this difference will be visible in a moment. Let's significantly increase the cluster's load. After some time, the result can be seen in the form of increased throughput. While individually both components seem to be doing just fine, the whole system is not able to handle this load as indicated by the global constraint chart. Let's slightly adjust this threshold value in order to trigger a constraint violation. Normally this process is performed by AF Dream Design tools but can also be done manually. As previously, after amending the configuration file and applying the changes, the results can be observed instantly. Now, when the next window closes above the red level, a constraint violation will be triggered. Let's increase the load even further. The constraint has just been violated. It is now expected that Spacefire takes action and boots additional compute nodes. Let's switch to the CPU charts to observe this process. Currently, only two nodes are operational. After a brief moment, new data points have been provided by two new workers. Let's go back to the constraint charts and check the effects of additional nodes. Although the throughput is at an even higher level, almost instantly the system reaches equilibrium. Let's return the load to its initial value. Let's also return the threshold level to its starting position. Since the load is lower, it is expected that the additional worker nodes will be switched off. Let's see that. As indicated by the hole in CPU data, the additional nodes are already offline. The last piece of information that can be monitored are custom metrics. The mask detector reports the number of people detected with and without masks. But according to the configuration, only the second metric is being plotted. Let's change that and add an alert. In the configuration file, another chart and an alert definition are being added. Analogously to AI sprint constraints, violation of these values can also be monitored. Infrastructure metrics also have this feature. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for watching.